quick. You all right? What do you want? Mr. Whitaker, you got an appointment to meet with my Paul over Lawyer Betts's. Don't worry, Hoss. I'll get him there. Time for another dance. Monsieur, s'il vous plaît. <laughs> hey, Oz, look at that old man over there. He's been in here drinking and dancing with Molly all afternoon. <laughs> Most any man half his age would be under the table by now. Boyfriend. Now, you listen to me, Sal. I'm going to give you one minute to get out of here, and then I'm going to pull that dyed hair right out by the roots. Oh, no. I heard how you lured him over here, you no, thief. But I had to come and see it for myself. No, no, oh, no, no, so now you've right. seen. Now, get out. This is my territory. No, 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 you do not send her away. No, of course, she is charming also. Charming? Well, I'm not... You should see this one when she gets out of bed in the morning. Oh, She's really? enough to make a, a strong man die. Oh, no, no, ladies, please. You no, stay no. out of this, honey. I have to teach this cruel bait to stay away from my no head. bait! Take that back, you decrepit old bag! Bag! Don't you think we ought to break them up? Yeah, before they start breaking up the fixtures. Oh, please, gentlemen, no, no, no. Let the ladies have their little fun. I would be willing to pay whatever small damage they cause. You will! <laughs> Certainly not. That would be the height of disrespect. Since it is me they are fighting over. Quite a list, mister. You sure you can pay? No, don't worry, my friend. Do not worry at all. But I am worrying. What is your name, anyway? Lafitte. Jean Lafitte. Hey, there was a famous pirate named Jean Lafitte. You ain't by a chance related, are you? Related? My dear friend, I am that Jean Lafitte. <laughs> meeting. I can't wait. Yeah, just take a minute, Paul. Uh, Joel, you tell the lawyer that we'll be... How long? A few minutes? Right. Now, what is it? Come on with me. Paul. Yeah? Do you remember one time telling us about having met Jean Lafitte when your ships were at the same harbor? Yeah, when I was an apprentice seaman. Yeah, down in New Orleans. Mm -hmm. Now, let me ask you something. How old would he be now? Well, according to reports, he died a long time ago. Yeah, but that's according to reports now. If he is still alive, how old would he be? Oh, well, I know. I guess maybe about 70. 70, huh? Well, what's all this about? Paul. He's over there in Roy Coffey's jail right now. He says he's Lafitte? What's he doing in that jail? Oh, there's a ruckus over at the saloon, and a yeah. couple of women got in a fight over him. A couple of women got in a fight over him. 70-year-old man. Paul, wait till you see this 70-year-old. Howdy, Ben. 
Roy, <laughs> you come over to identify a prize prisoner like Hossier said you could? Well, Roy, I come over to have a look at a 70-year-old man. Now, I don't know if I can identify him. I, I was a kid when I saw Lafitte in New Orleans. Uh, besides, I heard he died a long time ago. Now, do you really think that could be him? Uh... Well, it could be. After all, he's in my jail. <laughs> Ben, what I've heard of this John Lafitte, he was a pirate and a smuggler and a swindler and just about every kind of a rascal known, but this fella sure answers that description. <laughs> he was also a war hero, Roy. Ever since Paul first told me about him when I was just a young'un, I got interested in him and I did some research, and I found out if it hadn't been for Jean Lafitte that we'd have lost the war 1812 at the Battle of New Orleans. Of course, that's right, Horst. But he was a... Uh... Pretty bloodthirsty pirate. And then he became a war hero. Then he went back to pirating again. Well, let's have a look at this ghost anyway. Well, come on, but I don't think he's no ghost. I think he's just a plain crook, like Sam the bartender's going to testify at the trial. Well, old man, we got somebody here who knew you in the old days. Most interesting. Is this the man? Yeah, that's Ben Cartwright. He wants to know the real John Lafitte. No, you are not old enough to have known me in my prime. Oh, well, I was just a pretty young apprentice even at the time. Oh, I see. Well, I'm afraid my memory is not that good. Uh, young girls, I remember. Young apprentice seamen, no. <laughs> No, I, I understand you're in jail here because a uh, little woman trouble. It was worth it. Those girls were absolutely delightful. And after all, what is there left for a poor, helpless old man but to try to enjoy his few remaining years? Helpless old man? Why, you old reprobate, you're just about as helpless as a two-headed sidewinder. <laughs> well, I don't think that's quite respectful to talk to an American hero like that. Him, a war hero? Hoss, oh, all these confidence men try to get you to feel sorry for him. Now, don't let this one fool you. Well, uh, I'll tell you how much he's fooled me. I'm going to bail him out. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pay all the damages. You what? I'm going to bail him out. Now, look, Hoss, you don't have to get yourself involved in this. this is... Now, Paul, you were the one that told me about the War of 1812 and about Jean Lafitte. Now, if this man happened to be Jean Lafitte, it'd be a crying shame for him to have to spend the last remaining days of his life behind bars. Hoss, you're letting this imposter play on your sympathies. But, Roy, I ain't for sure he is an imposter, and that's just the trouble. I'm gonna pay his damages. Well, all right, I got an itemized list here somewhere. Now, look, Hoss, we're already overdue at the lawyer, so let's go over there, and you can come back and settle this later. Paul, you go ahead. I'll join you later. All right. See you later, Roy. All right, Ben. There you are. Here's your stuff, your cane. Oh, we my walking your bag. Hey, you know something? Oh, yes. That's the darnest knife I've ever seen in my life. That, my friend, is a pirate's cutlass, as necessary to my profession as a plow to a farm. Well, what do you use it for? Slitting throats. <laughs> you know, I never know for sure whether you're joshing or whether you're on a level. You know I am never certain myself. <laughs> Chat. Okay. What did Hoss want, huh? Huh? Oh, I'll tell you about that later. Where's Amos? He won't be here. Well, how are we going to settle anything without him? Well, the, the truth of it is, he was here, but uh, he was so drunk, I had his foreman take him home. Now, look, Walter. I think we've waited just about long enough to get paid for that herd. Amos Whitaker swears that you were paid in full and in cash when you rode out to his place a week ago Tuesday. Well, then he is drunk. Has he got a receipt to prove that? Says he and your father are such old friends that they never bothered with the receipts and such. Well, that's true enough, but what's he trying to say? That I'm cheating him by asking him to pay twice for the same herd? It's a lot of money, Ben. Now, come on, Walter. You don't think I'm trying to pull some trick on him, do you? Well, of course not, Ben. I trust you implicitly. Well? The thing is, I trust Amos Whitaker implicitly, too. Oh, he's, he's a difficult man when he's drinking, but... Well, I've never heard of him doing anything even slightly dishonest. Well, I'm going to tell you one thing. Amos better be sober in the morning, because...
Because I'm riding out there to have a talk with him. Go, oh, Ben. Let me deal with it. Now, I've handled both your affairs for a long time. I promise I'll get to the bottom of it if I have to put aside everything else on my calendar. All right. Thank you, Walter. Well, I'm not being entirely unselfish, Ben. People are going to stop talking and start shooting. How's a lawyer going to make a living? So <laughs> <laughs> long, Mr. Best. Bye, little girl. Ready to go, horse? Oh, hi, Bo. What do you got there? It's a... Uh, it's a diamond. Ain't it pretty? Mr. Lafitte gave it to me. He said he, uh, he got that off of a Greek princess. Yeah, Pa was telling me about that new friend of yours, Hoss. He, uh, talked you into buying that thing? He gave it to me. It's a pretty big diamond. What did you give him in return? Just a couple of drinks over there at the Gold Lily. I bet I know. Then you talked him into taking every bit of money you had on you. Yeah. I'd have done that anyhow, even without this. You know, Joe, they say if you... if you take a, a rock, you put a diamond on top of it, you just tap it. Now, if it's a real diamond, it won't break. Of course, sir, uh, if it isn't a real diamond, it shatters in little pieces. Rock like that? Yeah. I, I ain't for sure. I even want to find out. Well, it's a few hours, I suppose. That man was a famous Jean Lafitte. Oh, such a long walk. Mr. Lafitte, hi. You hoof it all the way out here? Well worth it to see my good friend, Monsieur Hoss, again. What can I do for you, Mr. Lafitte? Oh, yes, I have another gift for you. A most magnificent... ruby. A ruby, huh? Yes, now hold it up to the light. Oh, you see how it glitters in the sun? Do you know how I got that ruby? I myself. I tore it from the finger of a Spanish grandee after boarding his boat in the Straits of Lascar. Yeah? Well, it's, uh... Beautiful. It's mighty, mighty pretty. Accept it from me, please. I appreciate it. Thank you, sir. Now, now, what can I do for you? Yes. Uh, Monsieur Oss, I will go hungry and homeless. Unless you see fit to extend the hospitality of the Pont de Rosa for a few days. Mr. Lafitte, what'd you do with that money I gave you yesterday? All foolishly squandered on beautiful women. If there is one thing life it enjoys is foolish squandering on beautiful women. I mean, Dad, Mar if you ain't got more gall than any man I ever met, Mr. Lafitte. Yes, I find it very useful. Well, I'll have to talk to my pa and brother. Mr. Lafitte, are you all right? Uh, uh, it's you, here. you will please explain to them that a futsal old war veteran is waiting outside. Tell them that the hero of the Battle of New Orleans awaits their decision as to whether or not he will have food this day. You ask them that, Monsieur Ross. may take some time to convince them. Monsieur Ross, old soldiers have patience, and I have great faith in you.
he turns out to really be Lafitte, we're going to feel pretty foolish, ain't we? Turn him away and all him being a, an American war hero. Oh, a war hero, my foot. He's a swindler. He's a phony. But well, can't you want... What do you got there? It's a, another little gem he gave me. Oh, you got to be kidding. Look at that. It's another phony gem. Now, look, what do I have to do to get it through that thick skull of yours? What does that prove? It just proves Mr. Lafitte's got a bunch of phony jewelry. Well, well, forget it. You try and talk to him, Pa. <clears throat> well, uh, it's uh, highly improbable that he's the Mr. Lafitte, the war hero. Huh? But it's not entirely impossible. Huh? So uh, I suggest we compromise. Let's have him here in our home as our guest for the next couple of days. But let's keep a very careful eye on all the silverware. You know, if Adam was here right now, he would agree with me. Well, he ain't here. He's in San Francisco and Mr. Lafitte's staying, and that's all there is to it. Hey, Pa, you mind if I uh, take a look at those books of yours? You want to look at books? Yeah, I thought I might uh, read up on the War of 1812. <laughs> when you sober. Some folks call that cheating. Well, it's some sort of misunderstanding. I'm certain if you two could get together, talk. There's nothing I'd like better than to talk to Ben Carteright. I've been looking forward for a long time to telling him exactly what I think of him. Well, why weren't you in shape to do just that with Lawyer Betts' office the other day? Lawyer Betts? What are you talking about? This is the first I've been in town in a long time. Mr. Whitaker, I seen you with my own two eyes come out of this saloon Friday. All your bets said you showed up at his office, and drunk you couldn't talk. And he sent you home. Sometimes I don't remember. When I get drinking, pretty heavy. That's my business, not yours. Yeah. Mr. Whitaker, look, why don't you let me alone? Isn't it enough that you've lied to me and cheated me? Yes, 
Do not talk like that to a friend of Jean Lafitte, or you will find you have no throat to talk through. Mr. Lafitte, please. I can take care of this, I assure you. Very well, if you insist, but you. Remember. I'm, I'm sorry about that. He, he's just a harmless old man. What I was about to ask you... Had you been drinking hard that day you claimed that you paid my paw for that herb? My foreman was there. He saw me hand your father that money. And Tully told you about it the next day, huh? Mr. Whitaker, I've never known you to lie. And certainly not my Paul. But I'm sorry, I, I can't say the same thing for Tully. My poor would be more than happy to ride out to your place at your convenience. Anytime tomorrow. Talk this thing over with you and try to get it settled. Beautiful breakfast. Beautiful breakfast, but you know, this coffee should have a little chicory in it in the style of New Orleans. I will tell Hop Singh the secret. You know, for a man ain't had no sleep, you're mighty chipper this morning, Mr. Lafitte. Yeah, how do you do it? Clean living, my boy. Clean living. No. It's all very pleasant. I gotta go to see him, Miss Whitaker. Don't lose your temper, Father. All right, good morning. Come on. I'm sorry, I'm just leaving, but uh, you're going to have some coffee with the boys. Well, thanks. Uh, where you hadn't been? I'm going to see Amos Whitaker. You save yourself a trip. Hmm? Amos is dead. What? What happened to him, Roy? Somebody slit his throat. With this. My cutlass, of course. During all the gaiety at the saloon last night, it was either lost or stolen. And that must have been after you threatened Whitaker. Oui. I first noticed it was missing after Monsieur House left for home around uh, midnight, I should say. And you two weren't together all evening? No, sir. Mr. Lafitte stayed at the saloon after I left. Mr. Lafitte, we figured that Amos Whitaker was murdered about 3 o'clock this morning. Now, where were you at that time? I cannot compromise a lady. Well, if you cannot come up with something better than that, you're in real trouble. Sheriff, before you start making any charges, maybe you ought to check and find out where Amos Whitaker's foreman was at 3 o'clock this morning. I know where Tully was. He was getting his throat slit, too. On my honor, as a soldier who was decorated by the American government, I had nothing to do with these killings. Just the same, you're going to have to come along with me. All right. We'll see that you have a, a defense lawyer. You are most kind. Um, you, you look at that broiled lizard tongue. A very interesting dish. Now, what are you talking about? That's the most tender chicken there is to be had anywhere. Then what is your secret recipe that makes it taste like broiled lizard tongs? Hiya, Johnny boy. Oh, just in time. Mon <laughs> oh. Mr. Lafitte, Molly here says that she was the one you was out with the other night, and right during the time the murder took place. So I reckon that clears everything up, huh, Roy? <laughs> That's right. Johnny Boy and I went for a buggy ride after we left the saloon. Oh, it was very romantic. We must have stayed out till almost 2 o'clock in the morning. No, it was much later than that, ma chérie. You remember the beautiful sunrise as we returned? Sunrise? What sunrise? This sunrise. The one you and I watched this morning together. Just uh, tell the truth, Miss Molly, exactly as you remember it. Well, the truth is, it, 
It was just before two o'clock when I got back to my room at the hotel. Well, that would have given Johnny Boy here plenty of time to ride out Damus Whitaker's ranch for three o'clock in the morning, wouldn't it? I uh, think that'll be all, Miss Travers. I'm sorry, Johnny Boy. It's been fun up to now. Molly. Johnny Boy. Molly. Right there. She's lying. It is her word against mine. Uh, I mean no offense, Mr. Lafitte. But as your lawyer, it is my duty to point out that yours is the word of a, a pirate with an extremely spotty record. Lawyer Betts, you think that Mr. Lafitte's past will have any influence on the jury? Jurors are only human. I think it might make a very big difference. In that case, gentlemen, I have a small confession to make. I am not Jean Lafitte. You ain't Jean Lafitte? And you spent all this time convincing folks you were? Let us say I am an old man who enjoys his little joke. Making fools out of folks. Is that your idea of a joke? I am sorry, messieurs. I am very sorry. I have lied to you often, but this, I swear to you, is the truth. I did not kill Monsieur Whitaker or his foreman. And I reckon you're willing to swear to that on your honor as a great American hero, huh? I do not blame you for no longer believing in me. Again, Mr. Lafitte, or whatever his name is, I'll be right back. I'm sorry, Hoss. You know, I, I reckon I'm pretty stupid, but for some reason or other, boy, I can't keep from believing him when he tells me he didn't kill him two men. Now, why, why should you think that makes you stupid? He, uh, he happens to be a man who lives by his wits. You happen to be a fellow who lives by your heart, and you know, I think I like your way better. Well, it don't make no difference, I reckon, because I've had it with him. All his tall tales and his lies and his fake jewelry. I mean, really, Paul, I've had it with him. Oh, uh, how kind of you to bring me fresh linen. It's all right, uh, Mr. Lafitte. Uh, Monsieur Oz, I hate to ask, but when a man's life is at stake, he will risk anything, any humiliation. Mm-hmm. Just one last small favor. Like? The very beautiful Mademoiselle Molly will be in her room at the hotel right now. I would appreciate it very much if you would talk to her and ascertain why she stole my cutlass. Mr. Lafitte, why are you so all fired sure that it was Molly that stole your cutlass? Because I know women. Now off with you to Mademoiselle Molly before she leaves for the dance hall. Dad. I reckon I'm some kind of a dang fool or something. Monsieur Oz, just please believe me innocent of those murders, whatever else you may believe of me. So you think I swiped Johnny Boy's cutlass while he and I were dancing together, huh? And then after that, I suppose I slipped it to a confederate and took Johnny Boy buggy riding until dawn. Is that it? Oh, no, Miss Molly, it ain't what I think. It's... You know, Haas, that two-faced old rascal's really got you bamboozled. Now, if you'll excuse me, I gotta get to work. Yes. Yeah. Mr. Lafitte! Mr. Lafitte! Put that thing away! What are you doing? 
Not until I have sliced this so beautiful little lady into not so beautiful little pieces. Oh, Hoss, Hoss, he's just not going up to do it. You will die by inches. You will die slowly, oh. slowly. Oh. Ah, you will die. Oh. Oh. Feet, Mr. Lafitte! Oh. <laughs> no, I must... I must follow her, please. I must find out where she goes. You're going right back to jail where you belong. That's where you're going. If Lafitte gives you his word of honor that he will return to the jail cell at once, will you follow her? Yeah, but you ain't Lafitte, remember? Yeah. You're a fake. Even an imposter has honor. There, you see? She runs down the street. Does she run to the sheriff's office? No, she runs in the opposite direction to her unknown accomplice. You must follow her. You must. Or forfeit me to the hangman. All right, but if you're making a fool out of me again... Back to the jail cell, I swear to you. Dépêchez-vous, s'il vous plaît. Je vous en prie, vite, vite. All right, I'll follow her, but you back to the jail, you hear? Cell. Did not Lafitte keep his word as always? Did I not return to my cell? He must not have stayed very long. What are you doing with Roy's hat and coat on in here? It is a disguise. Now I'm accomplice to a jailbreak. Take heart, Monsieur Hoss. All will be straightened out in due course. Now, what about Mademoiselle Molly? That's something else. She didn't go to no Confederate. She went to her lawyer. That's where she went. So? What lawyer? Same one you got. Walter Betts. Oh! She didn't get to see him, though. There's a note on his door said he wouldn't be back till after supper. Wait a minute. Where are you going? Lafitte is counting on his good friend for one last small favor. What more do you want from me, anyhow? My whole defense depends upon it. Now follow me. Betsy's back door. Looks like any other door to me. Would you mind keeping your eye on this street while I make my examination, please? Well, make it snappy, because Mr. Betts is going to be back here in a minute. How long are you going to have to study that door, Mr. Lafitte? Mr. Lafitte? You didn't tell me you was going to break in here. Would you have allowed it? I certainly wouldn't. You see? Oh, what are you figuring on finding in here anyhow? Evidence that lawyer Betsy is Mademoiselle Molly's accomplice. That ain't the silliest dang thing I ever heard of. Oh, is it? Lawyer Betsy is honest clean through. Ah, oh, monsieur, did I not fool you into thinking that I was Jean Lafitte? You sure did. Then is it not possible that Lawyer Betts could have fooled you into thinking that he is honest, clean, through? Yeah, what makes you suspect him? It could be nobody else. He made a brief appearance in the saloon that night after you left, and Mademoiselle Molly could very easily have slipped in my cutlass. There was no other explanation. Oh, yes, it is. There's one. Oh, yeah, indeed. What, 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 what? That uh, you could still be the murderer after all. 
Could I look you in the eye if that were true? Yep, and pick my pocket while you've done it. Well, since you understand me so well, you must know that I could not have murdered those two men, no? Huh? Thank you, Monsieur Hoss. Now, please, one small favor. Will you continue looking for evidence? Hey, wait a minute. Mr. Feet, how am I going to find what I don't even know what I'm looking for? Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait just a dang minute. What do you think you're doing, anyhow? The safe, it was behind the picture. You know. I can't do that. that. That's burglary. Mm -hmm. Everything will be all right. You wait and see, Monsieur Us. Almost exactly the same amount Mr. Whitaker claimed to have given your father. Whew. Hey, will the sheriff see that? No. It would be a mistake to give it to the sheriff. A man as shrewd as Mr. Betts would no doubt have some explanation as to how he came by such a huge sum. What are we going to do then? Several things. One, we can return the money to the safe and lock it up. Two, we can put the picture back in place on the wall so that Mr. Betts will not know that his secret has been discovered. And uh, three, three, three. Ah. <clears throat> can you see me here? Nope. Then three, I will hide here. And for you, I suggest... Uh, The closet. We're gonna hide out till the lawyer gets back, right? Exactly. Then we find out what Mademoiselle Molly has to say to him. Yeah, but what if he catches us? Always you look on the gloomy side. Why cannot you be more cheerful? You will not have to remain there more than one hour at the most. gagged Sheriff Coffee in his own jail and then escaped? Good. Good? The old buzz is threatening to kill me. Well, no, I'll ask the sheriff to appoint a deputy to guard you. You'll be safe. And Lafitte's escaping will be considered an admission of guilt. You know, you're smart, Walter. So smart you sometimes worry me. You get people trusting you and then... And then? And then, like Tully... What about Tully? Tully played square with us all the way through. You paid him off with a slit throat. Isn't a two-way split better than a three? And what happens to me if you decide a one-way split is better than two? I rode all the way to Morgan City today to make the arrangements to buy a dance hall with the money from this deal. You're going to run it with me as a silent partner. Now, does that sound like a double cross? every word we said. Unbuckle the gun belt. Drop it. Where's Lafitte? Oh. You never were a very good liar, Hoss. He's around here somewhere. What makes you so sure? Well, Hoss isn't tricky enough to pull something like this on his own. Where is he? I said I didn't know. 
place here you could hide except... Deceitful, conniving old... How long were you in that closet? About an hour. Your Honor, may I address the court? I came home from a business trip, found a prowler in my office. It was dark and I shot him before I realized it was Hoss Cartwright. And to this day, I have no idea what he was doing there. Well, Your Honor? Killing Amos Whitaker was bad enough. Tully was even worse, but... But Haas... I suppose you'd rather the law hung both of us. Somewhat out of breath is all. When one reaches the age of 70, it is time to give up acrobatics. And here, never, never put such temptation in my path again. Oh. Look well, here, uh, Mr. Lafitte, you could have got away with that. How come you didn't? Because... You believed in me. You were my friend. And a feat never abandons a friend. Uh, at least not very often. <laughs> I, I, I don't know where you find these stories. Uh, now, look, before you leave, you must do us one small little favor. Well, certainly. Now, tell us who you are. Who? I, I mean, who you are really. Who I am, really? I'm Jean Lafitte, of course. But, Mr. Lafitte, when you were in the jail cell, you said that... Because at that time it was inconvenient for me to be Jean Lafitte, but now with the charges against me being dismissed, I am free to resume my true identity. I see. Well, uh, where are you going to go now, Mr. Lafitte? Where will I go now? Where the music is gay. Where the wine is good, and where the women are beautiful. Hey, bien. No. Oh. Monsieur Oz, one small last favor, if you please. I thank you very much. Mes amis, au revoir. <laughs> you know, I don't think he's ever going to change. No, I guess not. Hey, look what the old phony gave me. Another diamond. Hey, no, another one? <laughs> what did you give him in return this time? <laughs> the horse he's riding? No. The second best saddle I own. And every penny I had to my name. But all is worth it. The stories the old guy. Told. I know. He was telling me one just the other day, a new one. Yeah. 
See, he was boarding this ship all along, yeah. single-handedly. Yeah. He had his yeah. story, hey, he jumped down. Yeah. This is a real diamond. Yeah, no. So he jumped... I don't suppose that really is. together be ashamed not to keep in touch you look me up now whenever you get to town no i don't believe i will why not i'll buy you a beer i don't drink mister well, coffee what about coffee help yourself me i pick my own friends thanks for stopping go ahead and take it away ah, heat up. Ah! <laughs> You take all the sport out of drinking. I was on the verge of despair. You still are. I'm not going to loan you any money, Charlie. I got something that's too big for me to handle. I was hoping against hope. What do I find the best in the bed? Not one red cent. It's big and easy. He's a greenhorn like you wouldn't believe. Hay seeds in his hair and money coming out his ears. Somebody's gonna clean him like that. Unless you and me do it first. Tell me more. Hey, Paul, look who's here. Hey, kill it. Chris Kelly, how are you? Good Fine. to see you. Good Fine. to see you. When'd you get in? Just a little bit ago. Yeah? I saw him down the road about four miles walking. Well, uh, how'd you make out in the gold fields? Any luck? I found a little gold. Yeah? No, Good. I told him he could have his old job back. Oh, sure. Of course he can. Hey, what's a big gold operator like you uh, wanted to work as a cow hand for? Well, I uh, figured if a man's got a little money, he ought to be happy. But it didn't work out that way. People are always hanging around me, slapping me on the back, calling me friend and pard. Mm -hmm. Always trying to get my money. It was enough to gag a rattlesnake. Some people are like that. Sure will be a pleasure to get out there in the bunkhouse and get settled. Well, of course, the best way to protect yourself is to say as little as possible about your money. That's just what I got in mind. It's especially important right now, Chris. There's a bunch of confidence men in town. Sheriff doesn't know who they are, but he does know a lot of people have been swindled. Now, if it were to become known that you had struck it rich, They'd be on your back in no time. Yeah, well, how much do you make? Oh, uh, 67,000. 67,000? Hey, friend, hard. Listen, we, uh, we <laughs> want to talk to you about a couple of things. <laughs> no, don't you dare talk to anybody about how much money you made. You're not carrying it around with you, are you? No, I, I bought me a letter of credit. Oh, that's a good idea. 
Oh, not a good idea. You take that letter of credit into the bank first thing in the morning. Oh, and uh, if anybody tries to send you to City Hall or the county jail, cheap. <laughs> you tell us about it. All right. Come on, let's get settled. <laughs> Thanks, Mr. Carter. Listen, did you, did you ever think about buying a bunkhouse? I got to use a bunkhouse out there. I'll make that $67,000. See us about Howard. Charlie says he's lined up a sucker for us here in town. I thought you want to go on to Dev in the morning. This could be good. All right, we've made five scores here already. No fixing with the sheriff. I figure it's time to move on. I think we ought to be able to pull off one more without any trouble. Depends if it's worth it. How much money this chump's got, Charlie? The story is he made it pretty good in a gold field. You're the double jointed fellow they call Loose Charlie. That's me. He falls in front of carriages, throws himself out of joint, and yells and carries on. What do you pick up for a thing like that? Fifteen, twenty bucks? Yeah, generally. His idea of a big score in ours might be something different. Charlie put me on to something good a couple of years ago. This could run maybe three, four thousand dollars. Oh, more like five times that. Second thought, maybe we better take a look at this chum. Indeed. That's the mark. Looks like a real cinch. There's a couple problems. I see how quick I can pick him up. Buy him a few drinks. Oh, he doesn't drink. All right. Buy him coffee. Stay with him. We'll get him in a game tonight. He doesn't gamble. We'll teach him. He knows. He's against all forms of wagering. That knocks out poker. And the race why? Well, let the alderman try the stock market swindle. Uh-uh. Why not? He's a country boy. You say stock, and he thinks you mean cows. Charlie, is there anything else you haven't told us about this Yahoo? Well, he tips his hat to ladies. And he's honest. How honest? All the way, straight as air. His name is Christian Keller. Is he ripe for picking? I mean... Don't count on it. Charlie, thanks for nothing. He deposited $67,000. Are you sure? Positive. Well, it may be a little time consuming, but I guess we're going to have to sell him something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, what kind of company was that again? A uh, patent reaper company. Patent reaper company. Well, that is a rich, full sound. And how did they pick you up? I was sitting there having a cup of coffee, and this fellow comes up to me. Walt, his name is. Mm -hmm. And he says, did I drop my wallet? And sure enough, underneath my chair, there's this wallet. So you looked into it, and you found out who owned it. Hmm? That's right, Mr. Hobie Miles. And the wallet was stuffed with money. Was it? So, of course, you took the wallet right back to Mr. Hobie Miles at the hotel. And Mr. Miles just happened to own a patent reaper company. That's right. You know, I was finding wallets all the time up north. Well, they sure didn't waste any time, did they? No, but they didn't try and sell me anything. They just kept talking about how much money the stockholders in this company are going to make. But they, uh, they did say I could see the plans. Did they? And when do you see these people again? In the morning. And I asked him if I could bring a friend along. And they, uh, they said he'd be welcomed. 
Very good. I look forward to seeing a patent reaper. There you are, gentlemen. This little beauty will revolutionize harvesting. We already have orders for more of these machines than we can possibly manufacture in a year. You know, I think that could be a very big success. It already is. Well, uh, when I was here before, I uh, said something about stock. Walt said that... Uh, Walt? What did Walt say? He said maybe we could buy some stock. He did, did he? What'd you say that for? You know every share of stock was spoken four months ago. I thought, Mr. Ma... That's the problem. You didn't think. Now, gentlemen, I thought you came up here to see these drawings. I never dreamed Mr. King would give you the idea you could buy stock. I've, uh, I've refused uh, old friends, even members of my own family. Oh, well, I'm uh, very sorry. I... I'm sorry we've troubled you. No, no, wait now. Mr. Miles, Mr. Kelly, he is a friend of yours. He returned your wallet with more than a thousand dollars in it. He's an honest man, a, a deserving man. I admit that. And Mr. Kelly's friend, Mr. Cartwright, why, he owns one of the largest ranches hereabouts. He could be of great help in getting the reaper sale started in this area. Think about it, Mr. Miles. You be helping a man who helped you and also helping your reaper company. Well, now, there was a block of stock I was saving for a man who was supposed to be here two days ago. He hasn't shown up yet. So under the circumstances, I suppose I can let you have that. Thank you, Mr. Miles. It'd be expensive. Cost you $71,000. Well, I haven't got that much. <clears throat> well, uh, Chris, I, uh, I just might be able to come up with the difference. Cash or certified check, no later than tomorrow morning. Yeah, well, uh, we could, uh, we could get, get over to the bank and get things started. Well, thank you very much. It's I, all right. It's uh, awfully nice of you to allow us to participate in this. It's all right. Reasonable profit on an investment is always welcome, but this also offers us a chance to help every rancher in Nevada. All right, gentlemen. We'll see you shortly. Hey, homie, you're Jim Dandy. Well, I was in top form, if I do say so myself. <laughs> and so was Ben Cartwright. <laughs> oh, Cartwright and that Chris fella are coming up with the money. Mm-hmm. In marked bills with the sheriff in the next room. Huh? Don't you know a smart man when you see one? A man like Ben Cartwright isn't going to make a heavy investment after one meeting in a hotel room. So pack your things, both of you. You're leaving town right now. I guess we better. And this teaches me the virtues of humility. And what about you? Mr. Blackwell? Hmm? Obi wants to know what uh, you're gonna do. You never give up. Not you. A wise man knows when it's time to quit. What happened, Ben? I'll tell you what happened, Clem. Mr. Miles and company have disappeared. Vamos, checked out. I'll be. I had the room next door, right? I was going to wait till you handed the money and then nail them. Sure. Now, what could have spooked them? Maybe we were too willing to buy. Well, we chased them out of town anyway. I mean, that's not as good as putting them in jail, but it's something. Oh, it is. Eh? Well, it's a job for me, is what it is. I've got to try and pick up the trail now. Yes, you do, Clem. Good luck. Oh, thanks a lot, Ben. Well, let's get back to work. <laughs>
right, lady? Oh, yes, I'm fine. I've been dragged across what oh. must have been half of Nevada by a runaway horse that was guaranteed gentle and trustworthy. I've been battered and bruised. Yes, I'm just fine. Yeah, I guess you are. What do you mean? I'm just fine. Otherwise, you wouldn't be able to make a speech like that if you weren't. You sure of that? Pretty sure. Well, he's, uh, he's settled down now. What scared him? Why'd you run away? He saw a snake in the road. Oh, see there? That's why he took off. Here you go. Let me help you down. All right. I'm, I'm sorry. Oh, that's all right. I should be getting used to it. I'll just hold him in a... You get on down. Are you sure? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. I was beginning to think you didn't know much about horses. Yeah, could be, but I, uh, I know more about horses than I do about ladies. Oh? Well, I think it's a mistake to ask this, but I'm going to anyway. Just what do you mean by that? Nothing, except I thought you might get mad at me again for the horse getting scared. Oh, no. Anything but. I certainly haven't been very polite, have I? You saved my life, and I've scolded you as if the whole thing were your fault. I was thinking it was. I'm sorry. I can't even thank you properly. I don't know your name. Chris, ma'am. Chris Keller. Charity McGill. And I do thank you. You're welcome. Look, Miss McGill, why don't you get up here in the buggy? It's all right. Come on. And I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll go to the Ponderosa. I work there. Not too far from here. Both you and your horse can get rested up. You ever heard of the Ponderosa? No. The biggest ranch in these parts. Mr. Cartwright owns it. Well, you know more about ladies than you think you do. that horse all settled down now. Well, I guess I'm all settled down, too. Well, I better get started. Well, Miss McGill, it's a long ride to Virginia City. Wouldn't be any trouble if you like to stay over or if you want one of us to drive you back. Oh, you've done quite enough already, Mr. Cartwright. Thank you so much. You're more than welcome. Well, goodbye, and thank you all. Nice meeting you. I'll Bye. walk you to the buggy. I'm afraid I'll never be able to repay you, Mr. Keller. Well, don't think anything about it. Strikes gold and rescues a pretty girl. Some fellas have all the luck. Yeah, well, she's kind of cute. It seems very nice. Mr. Cartwright? Hmm? If I get all those uh, strays in this afternoon, uh, can I have tomorrow off? Uh, <clears throat> yes, I, I suppose so. Uh, any particular reason you'd like to have the day off? I just thought I'd ride into Virginia City. Yeah, well, he's got money in the bank. He probably wants to win and watch it grow. <laughs> Miss McGill! Hey, can I give you a hand? Well, I would appreciate that. Just up to the hotel? Uh-huh. How have you been? Fine. Uh, lemon drops. Try and chew them up quick so I can talk. <laughs> Do you have any peppermint? What was salt? Mm, thank you. I have an awful sweet tooth. So do I. I go around like this half the time. Say, did you get back to town all right the other day? No, I was captured by Indians, bought by a band of wandering gypsies, and finally rescued by the cavalry. That sounds terrible. Was. I nearly missed dinner. <laughs> ah, fish hooks. I know. They're too big. No, they're about right. Mm -mm, they're too big. I don't like to dispute a lady. Well, don't then. Have you done any fishing? Certainly. What kind? Chub, dace, catfish. Well, there you are. And trout and salmon. These things must be for sharks. Do you like to fish? Oh, yes. So do I.
Miss McGill. I, uh... Yes? Nothing. Forget it. Well, it was awfully nice seeing you again, Mr. Keller. And thank you very much. My pleasure. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Well, bye. Bye. Miss McGill, I, uh, I don't suppose you... Yes, I would. I'll be ready first thing in the morning. Oh, and those fish hooks are too big. Superstition fish can't hear. What you have to watch out for is letting your shadow fall on the water. Oh, your shadow's not going to fall on the water this time of day. Look at there. Mm. Uh huh? Here. Worms. Oh, no. Is that deep, I suppose? Of course. Grasshoppers, on the surface. Charity, your ignorance is pitiful. I'm going to go downstream. I'm work that for a while. It's a pure waste of time. We'll see. One of your grasshoppers. <laughs> I've had a wonderful time, Chris. So have I. May I have my key, please? Maybe tomorrow I can uh, I can get off early and come into town and I'll, I'll take you to supper. Is there anything wrong? I don't think so. Well, are you sure? No, it's just some business. You go along, Chris. I'll talk to you later. Say so. Charity? It's all right, Chris. Good. See you later. Mr. Cartwright. Yeah? Uh, can I speak to you for a few minutes? Sure, Chris. I was over uh, taking a look at Ed Newhall's place the other day. And he's thinking of selling. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, I was just wondering what you thought about it. Well, Ed Newhall's place is uh, good land there. Nice little, uh, nice little house. Good outbuildings, too. My impression, too. Mm -hmm. Just needs a little work. Are you interested? Yeah. Well, since those, uh... The swindlers took off. I thought I put the money to good use. Find a ranch, huh? Yeah, I know it's reaching kind of high, but, uh, well, Charity McGill's the finest girl I ever met. Well, now, you're thinking of getting married, too. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm thinking about it. I haven't asked her yet. I haven't got up the nerve. 
I don't know what she'll do when I, when I do ask her. <laughs> you mean you, you don't know her well enough to know what she's liable to say? Well, sure I do. I know that uh, her father died recently and that she lives in Sacramento and she's here on business. And there's this fellow that's given her some kind of a problem. But I expect everything's going to work out all right. I sure hope so. Yeah, yeah, so do I, Chris. Sure do. Meanwhile, getting to know her better is all to the good. And a marriage is for a long, long time. River, I tied into a big old steelhead. Boy, did he give me a fight. We're not doing very well today, are we? No. What time is it? Oh, one, one thirty in there. Why? Well, I have to be back to see the lawyer this afternoon. But there's still time. Honey, if there's anything I can do to help. No, no, it's just some affairs of my father's. Go on with the story. Oh, well, I. I wrestled with him for 20 minutes to a half hour easy. He was a real old sock to locker. That big. That's the gospel. How big? Oh, more like that. I thought so. <gasps> What'd I do? I've got a bite! <laughs> so I guess I'll go on home. How soon? Day after tomorrow. That's kind of sudden. Yes, I suppose. When will you be coming back? I don't believe I will. I mean, there's no real reason to. Guess not. You can come visit me. No, I don't think I want to. I'll write to you. Will you miss me? Oh. Charity, you're not going anywhere, because I love you, and we're going to get married. dreading it at the same time. What for? I can't, Chris. Why not? Well, you can't ask a man to take on a lot of unwanted problems. Well, not if you really and truly love him. <laughs> well, when my daddy died, about the only thing he left was the Leadbetter number six. Well, that's a gold mine just below here. Yes, I know. Well, about two weeks ago, I got a letter from this man, Arthur Blackwell, saying that he had mortgages and liens against the mine, and if I didn't pay them, he was going to take the mine. Well, I don't understand your problem, Miss Miguel. Let him take it. That mine was worked out years ago. No, Daddy said he found a new vein, but that's not the point. Mr. Blackwell has been saying that my father salted the mine and falsified the assay to swindle him. Well, I'm not going to let this man blacken my father's memory. I see. I told Charity I had some money, and the easiest thing in the world was for me to get her out of debt. Well, I don't think you should do that. Well, Chris, you realize what you're saying. You're, I mean, when you strip it all away, what you'd be doing is uh, buying a gold mine. As long as it'll help Charity. Well, it'd have to be a loan, Chris, with a new assay and the proper papers drawn up and everything. What is the amount of the debt? $65,000. Hmm. Well, well, well. If you like, we'll, uh, we'll help you uh, take the assay. 
I mean, getting ore samples out of an old mine shaft is no work for a young lady. Well, that's very nice of you. I'd appreciate that. Of course. Uh, I'll, uh, I'll write a note uh, for you to sign, giving us permission to be in your property. Thank you, Mr. Cartwright. Not at all. story we just heard. Our horse is down with the south herd. Drop by there and tell them to meet us at the mine. I'll join you there in the morning. We just may be able to settle a couple of things. Ah, this hot coffee tastes good. Boy, it got cold last night. Whew, you're not kidding. Any visitors? Nope, nope, no one. Not at all? Yeah, from the looks of this place, nobody's been here in a year. Yeah. Gonna get the equipment here. Gonna get some samples all along the shaft. Maybe five feet or so. All right. I uh, want to get some core samples, too. About uh, six feet into the face. Well, might as well get started, huh? These samples are worthless. I don't see how there could be anything of any value in that mine. Well, at least Charity's been honest about it. She's the one that wanted the assay report. I'm still troubled by the fact that the amount of money that she owes happens to be almost exactly the amount of money that Chris has in the bank. Isn't that strange? Well, I think it's just a coincidence. I think you're barking up the wrong tree. Well, I hope so. Meanwhile, let's, uh, let's stick to the plan. If anybody tries to salt those samples, let him look the other way. All right. I'll wait here for Hoss. from the inside. Well, that'll give them the chance they want. And we can have a beer. Not a bad idea. hours and not even a nip. Two free beers and a free lunch? It wasn't all wasted. Yeah, I suppose you're right. You bring Rock to maybe so office? Maybe so office? Maybe so you get rich. Maybe so you don't. Maybe so. Yeah. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> ah, young men in search of a fortune. Bringing in a wagon load of high-grade ore for the ASA office. Solid gold rocks. I can tell by the feel of them. 
That's really our day for dingbats, isn't it? <laughs> Let's get this stuff inside. <laughs> Gil, sit down. Thank you. The uh, defense report was uh, brought back about an hour ago by Joan Candy. Now, uh, most of the samples were proved worthless. That's to be expected. But according to this report, apparently there's a vein of ore in that mine which assays out at an average of $2,500 a ton. Hey, that's great. I never doubted it. And that's almost exactly the same figure Daddy had. Now, all we have to do is get the money to Mr. Blackwell, and we'll have everything nailed down for you. For us. There's one other thing. Um, this report is based on one set of samples. Uh, we took two sets, as identical as we could possibly make them. My son, Hoss, is having the second set assayed in Carson City right now. Well, isn't that unusual? Just an added precaution. It's more than that. Well, let Mr. Cartwright tell me. Well, if the, uh, the two reports agree, then everything's all right. There's no problem. If they don't... He's saying there's something funny going on. Like what? Something. That's why he's getting two assays. Well, I think it's a good idea. I don't. Oh, Chris, stop fussing, and it's time we were leaving. Well, please let me know as soon as you get the report. Of course. Thank you. got the second report, huh? Well, the samples were the same as the others. Not quite. The best of these samples showed a value of a dollar six. That man's been manned up. The samples are just like the other ones. We got them at the same time from the same places. Sorry, Chris. She was trying to swindle me all the time. That's what she's trying to do. She wouldn't accept any help after I told her you were waiting for a second report. I had to beg her to take the money. But you did take it. Sure she did. Now, I'm not sure if I can get it back, but I'm going to try. I'd appreciate it if you ride along with me. Sure. My darling niece, where are you going? Well, I was going to leave Virginia City, but I wanted to see you first. Commander Boom, since you have the money that we all jointly earned from that young man, we do have to split it up. Well, I've been thinking about that. Uncle Arthur, I've made a decision about of this whole thing. Of course you have, my dear. All beginners come to that same decision the first time out. It's just buck fever. Come on. We'll have that little talk. Hmm? A great day, gentlemen. Truly a great day. That's right, Art. I mean, Mr. Blackwell. <laughs> there. Bleed, you rascal. <laughs> ah, greatest little invention since the wheel. Saw anything and everything. Uh, with the liquid essence of gold. <laughs> you are a good man. So are you, Charlie. From now on, you stick with us. <laughs> Much obliged. And now let us drink to that little lady without whose feminine charms and quick wit, none of this would have been possible. Here, here. To you, my dear niece, our heartfelt thanks. You did well on your first venture into the confidence world. Extremely well. Pity you had an attack of conscience. My dear, you must learn. Never give a sucker his money back. The real pity is you could have been one of the great ones. So, hail, farewell. <laughs> This 
way. Start talking any time. I'm sorry, Chris. Sure you are. They got you tied up here like a Christmas turkey. No wonder you're sorry. All right. Who tied you up, Miss McGill? My uncle and his bunch. They're on their way to Carson City. They said they were going to Denver, but I know they're going to Carson. When did they leave? Oh, 30, 40 minutes ago, in a buggy. Oh, Chris, I know you're not going to believe this, but I was trying to bring the money back. All of it, when Uncle Arthur caught me. You're right. I don't believe it. Come on, let's go find him. Hey, look at this. Oh, yeah. <laughs> hey, wait, I'm going with you. Peter's <laughs> coming up behind us. If we gave all the money back, we'd only get about nine or ten years. Don't be a fool. All right. You let us go. We'll leave the money behind. Otherwise, I'll burn it up. Every dollar.
My money's here and a lot more. They must have got it from the other fellas. Six weeks. Hard work. We let a chump like you take it away from us. There's no justice in the world. Your fault. My kin, but... You don't take after my side of the family. Well, I'm sure my fiancé won't mind. Your who? My fiancé. Fella named Chris Keller. We're going to be married. We're going to be what? I know you won't believe this now, but it's true. I found out I couldn't steal, not even once. Because I love you, you big loot. And I'll convince you if it takes the rest of my life. Well, it won't take that long. I love you, Chris, honest. Those are the prettiest words I ever heard. I'll make him a good wife, really. You know something, Chris? I believe she will. Come in this way. Yeah, this must be the tenth time that little heifer's run off. Well, I'll find her. Ah, uh, you going back and rest. I may get her and cook her for supper. Yeah, too little. Chuck wagon sure gonna look good, huh? Yeah. Yeah, okay. See ya. You know that brand. Drop your gun. Get off the horse. I'm sure we can solve it without using these. Chico, hey. Angelo. It would be a mistake to kill that man there. Woman, do not get in the way. You know the winter was hard. We need food, not a woman's foolish talk. I don't speak as a squaw. I've dreamed of the wolf, and the great prophet of the Paiute knows my name. We were sent to find the horses that graze these mountains. Two of us are on foot already. I left the herd a day's ride to the north, and I have spare horses. Those two are broken to the white man's taste, but they're yours if you'll have them. The last one isn't broken yet. But I'd like to trade him to you for that heifer. Well, ma'am, that's not a very good trade, but you got a deal. You know, are we near Cartwright land? You're on it, ma'am. I'm Horse Cartwright. Well, I've heard that the Cartwrights are honorable men and friends of the Paiute. I was on my way to your ranch to sell my horses. I did not know who you were. No harm done. Would you trade more beef for the horses that they'll catch? Absolutely. You get them, send word to me at our roundup camp, and I'll meet you back here and we'll discuss the details. I am called Bear Hunter. You are welcome at our camp anytime. mind if, uh, if we'd rest here for a moment. My shoulder's gone a bit sore. 
No, no. How'd you uh, injure that shoulder, anyhow? Well, to tell you the truth, I got a bit careless trying to break that horse. I got myself thrown. It's just a cut, but it, I think it might be trying to get infected. You know, we might ought to have a doctor take a look at that. Oh, no, that won't be necessary. I'm sure it's going to be all right. Well, it ain't going to hurt nothing. And the nearest one's in Virginia City. Well, I don't... Uh, I don't think I could make it that far right now. Well, we can't camp here, and that's for sure. It'll be freezing here in another hour or so. We can go on down to Low Country. I know a good place to camp down there. Well, I'll be grateful to you for the company, Mr. Cartwright. Miss O'Donnell, my name is Hoss. Aaron. Here, you rest a spell. I'll go fill this candy and then we'll be on our way. Fine. Shoulder bother you? A little. How hard that old pony throw you, anyhow? Well, not hard enough to break anything, but I don't think I'll be forgetting him for a while. <laughs> oh, man, no. Listen, I'll fix something to eat. It ain't gonna be too tasty, but it'll be filling. I got some jerky and some beans back here. Well, wait, wait. Why don't I just try to catch us a dinner? Like what? Pheasant or quail or both. Well, that's fine with me, but I ain't seen nothing running or flying. Well, it never hurts to try. It's going to be interesting. Is there anything I can do to help? Just keep your fingers crossed. Oh. Hey. Oh. Let me take a look at the shoulder. Boy. That thing ain't infected. It's sure trying. You know, maybe we shouldn't stop. Maybe we ought to keep going, huh? Well, I don't think my horse is up to it. I've been pushing him pretty hard. The fact is, I, I'm i not up to it. Yeah, well, you sure can't go out catching any game, that's for sure. Well, it doesn't take much muscle to set a snare. Huh. We're going to need a fire. Right. I'm aiming for Sue Stew. Sue Stew? What's that? Rabbit. Oh. Of that jerky, did <laughs> You know, this is the first coffee I've had since mine ran out last winter, and it smells like nectar. You said you wintered with the pilot. You lived with Indians all your life? Only the best part of it. Did the Sioux take you when you were a baby? Uh, no, no, I was, um, I was taken to the Sioux as a child by my father. Well, when my mother died, he had no idea how to go about raising a daughter. So he raised me like a son. I took to it like a duck to water. I still do, I guess. Why did, uh, why did your pa take you to the Sioux? Well, he was looking for freedom. And when he discovered the Sioux, he thought he'd found it. It's funny, I, I never thought of freedom as being that hard to come by. My parents had to pay a price for it. You see, they were raised in Ireland under the British occupation. You were born in Ireland? No, I was born on a ship. They wanted the first land I'd see to be a free one. Then we came ashore at Massachusetts. And there was a sign in every window saying, no Irish need apply. So we headed west. How did you get with the pilot? And what's this thing about a prophecy or whatever it was? I've been talking too much. You're good company, Austin. I'll just take these down and clean. Here, here. Oh. Hey, you got a fever. Come on, Aaron. Yeah. It's all You're right. You're going to have to get some rest. Come on. It's really all right, Oz. I just hope it's not too late. Let me fix 
takes his bed down for you. I'll get it. I'll get it. Just take it easy. Relax. Thank you. Yeah. I'll be fine. I really will be fine. All right? Yes, listen. Let me get you some cover. You don't have to I... keep that mad air off. There. That ought to keep the chill off. I promise you, if it is a fever, it'll be gone by the morning. I hope so. Thank you, Hart. You get some rest. Red man, white man. Red blood, white snow. Aaron. Aaron. You're gonna be all right. You hear? You're gonna be all right. I'll, I'll get you to a doctor. I'm glad to see you, Paul. Her name's Erin O'Donnell. What is she, some kind of white Indian? What happened to her? She got bucked off by a horse. And she's got an infected shoulder. It's bad. She's running a high fever. Figure she needs a doctor or a medicine man. Oh, shut up. Give me a hand. Gotta get her to a doctor. <laughs> How is she? I'm sure she's felt better. She sleep? You ever try to sleep through having a shoulder cauterized? She survived that. Now she's got to beat the fever. What do you think, Doc? We'll know by morning, one way or the other. I'll send my wife out to stay with her tonight. Someone should be with her. I'll go on up there right now. If she gets through this, she'll be laid up for a while. I've caused you a great deal of trouble. Oh, you're not to be sorry about it. Don't be silly. The main thing is you get some rest and get to feeling better. I'd forgotten how good linen feels next to your skin. I wonder if you'd open the window just a little. Erin, it's... It's a fever that's making you feel uncomfortable. It's, it's, I don't think you need the draft. It's not the fever. It's just being closed in. The fact is, I just don't like being closed in. Well, I'm afraid you're going to have to put up with it this time. Oss, if you don't do it, I will. Hey, wait a minute. Settle down. I'll open the window. That, that settle it. Well, I must say, you've got a mind of your own, haven't you? Oscar, right. What an uncommon man you are. How have you managed to survive in this savage world?
How are you feeling? Fine. Uh, brought you a little something. Go ahead, open it. You like it? Like it? I've forgotten how it feels to wear a dress. If you'll excuse me, I'll, I'll go and change. I hope I remember how to put this on. Come in, Mrs. Murray. Afternoon, Ben. Afternoon. How? Hi, Murray. How are you? Clint. Clint. Awesome. Well, I'd like you both to meet my niece, Mary Beth Johnston. Hi, Mary. I'm from Louisville, Kentucky. <laughs> yeah, Kentucky. Mary Beth's going to be visiting us for a month or so. Well, isn't that nice for you? Uh, sit down, ladies. Oh, please. thank you, Ben. Come on, Mary Beth. Thank you, Ben. Thank Thanks. you, ladies. Like some coffee? Well, that'd be real nice, huh? Oh, uh, Ben, uh, I... Isn't Joseph here? No, no, he's with the Miranda. Oh, I'd so hope Mary Beth could meet both your sons. Ben... And he oh, says uh... your other son's name is Little Joe. Well, I think that's just darling. Yeah, well, you'll meet him sometime. Right now, I got to talk over some business with Ben. Yeah. Nothing wrong with the roundup, is it? No, no, it's coming along fine. And uh, if we want it to stay that way, we've got to decide what we're going to do about those Paiutes. Pilots when we're near here. Besides that, they're, you're just after some wild horses anyhow. They'll come back. They've had a taste of good beef and they'll come back for more. Unless we let them know that they're not wanted. Clint, you're making a mountain out of a mole here. We haven't had any Indian trouble here for a long time. That's what my brother thought until he and his family were wiped out at Brinker's Ford. Oh, Aaron. Miss O'Donnell, this is Mr. and Mrs. Murray and their niece, Miss Johnston. I do. It's a pleasure, I'm sure. How do you do? I think we better talk privately. Come in. Come on, have a seat. Well. That's a nice little dress. You make it yourself, my dear? No, I, um... Never mind. A few little alterations here and there, and it'll do nicely. Well, I'm afraid I don't know how to sew. You should be grateful to the Cartwrights for giving you a chance to return to civilization. Well, I am very grateful to the Cartwrights. But I came here from as old a civilization as your own. And an honorable one. I uh, suppose those shoes are comfortable. Oh, yes, very, very. Is it true you all have to chew the leather soft to make them comfy? Sometimes. As it happens, these were a gift from my uncle. Your uncle? Yes, Bull Buffalo. He was a Sioux medicine man. Oh. It must be very difficult for a white girl to... Uh, protect herself among people who buy and sell women like animals. Miss Murray. No, it's not hard. When young men brought strings of war ponies as a bride price, my father had only to turn them down politely. My father never had to depend for an income on how many horses he could trade for me. How fortunate for your father. <laughs> Come along, Mary Beth. Smile. Good day. Goodbye, ma'am. Clinton, I would like to go home. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Hoss, I'm sorry. Yeah, so am I. For her. <laughs> I saw the way Hoss looked at her. She's got him wrapped right around her little finger. She wouldn't mind marrying one of the Cartwrights, that's for a fact. You probably don't mind having a bunch of Indians hanging around your place, but it sure makes it hard on my family. Well, I'm real sorry, Mr. Murray. But if 
boss wants it that way, that's exactly the way it's going to be. Well, I'm glad you can laugh. You weren't upset by them. Oh. Paul, she can take care of herself. Don't you worry about that. Oh. Darling people, my father would have called the Murrays. They're the kind that would have enjoyed the Sandy Wash massacre. Yeah. Indian women and children shot, bodies left in the snow. What a needless tragedy that was. I turned and left the Dakotas. I ran like a thief. I'd best go up and rest. Well, you must be tired. Yeah. We'll call you for dinner. Oh. Thanks again for the dress. Oh, yeah. Well, I'm sorry I forgot about the shoes. I like these shoes. But Murray won't do so secret. Oh, you know Murray. Yeah. Sees Paiutes under every rock. No, no. He just saw the whole Paiute nation riding over the hill on full war paint. Hey, there was a bear hunter and a couple of other braves now. I know, I know, but he thinks she's going to bring a whole lot more around. Well, Aaron was raised with the Sioux and wintered with the Pirates, so it's understandable that a few of them may come around to say hello or something, but Murray can't really believe that they're going to put together a war party, can he? Oh, yes, yes, he believes that, and he thinks that they're going to steal all our beef, and he just can't forget what happened at Brinkus Ford when he lost part of his family, and that's only half my concern. The other half is Aaron. She's all right, Paul. But for whatever reason, she ran away from the Dakotas. She left the Piutes. And now the first time she meets anybody outside our family, she runs into hatred and prejudice. And... You think you, you think she might try to run away again, huh? Well, once you start running, it gets easier every time. I'll tell you this. She tries. I'll do everything I can to keep her from it. I'm not surprised. Boss, don't you be surprised if you wind up being hurt. Paul, I know you're concerned, but you needn't be. I know how I feel and I know what I want. And what's troubling you? Well, it's not what Murray and them like him think of her, but it's what she thinks of us that concerns me. Hey, this Aaron. Looked at a lot of horse flesh, but that little pony of yours is one of the prettiest ones I ever saw. That is the best horse that I ever stole. Stole? Well, I stole his mother when she was in foal with him from a crow's camp. That's when the Sioux gave me the cool feathers that you saw, as a sign that I had medicine. But speaking of medicine, you never did tell me about that prophecy. What was that all about? My prophet said that I was the wolf's child, born to fight and die for the Indians. Do you believe that? When I was with the Sioux, I did. But now I'm not so sure. What are you sure of? I'm sure of one thing. I'm tired of being a curiosity. Do you know what I mean? I'm sure you do. When I look at you, I see a man with wisdom, of great strength, who prefers to be gentle.
concentrate on moving straight ahead instead of up and down. You'll get where you want to go faster. Oh, that's funny. That's very funny. That may not be the meanest jughead I've ever seen, but he'll do. Well, maybe you haven't appealed to his better nature. Oh, was that what you did? Just before I threw you? You made your point. But it did give me time to consider my mistake. I think I got his number now. Oh, would you mind letting me in on it before he kills me? Well, you might be able to talk me into it. My father got along with the Sioux very well. Probably because he never tried to change them. Hmm. Well, what did you folks do when the Sioux were moved to the reservation? Well, my father had died by then, and I, uh, I started horse hunting. Hmm. There's something you got a right to know. I was arrested by the army after the Brinker's Fort raid. They put you in jail? Oh, no. Into a hospital star room. Manacle to a cot. No windows. No light. No air. And what charge? I never did know exactly. I never saw a courtroom or a jury or a judge or the officer who ordered it. I think it had something to do with the prophecy. Well, they had no legal right. I was in no position to argue the point, Mr. Cartwright. Excuse me, please. I'm going to look in on Jughead. It ain't hard to figure out why she don't like being cooped up, is it? She hardly touched at dinner. Yeah. I reckon she can't get her mind off the little hungry youngins in the Piute camp. Yeah. Although it's spring, there should be plenty of game for food. Oh, yeah, small game. That ain't a, enough to feed a tribe, no, just rabbits. What if, if we're that short of food in the mountains, we may be in for some serious trouble. Well, we're that short. Of course, they got the cattle that they'll get from the horse trade, but that ain't enough either. <sighs> Wish you could feed them all. Yeah. Well, I think I'll go ahead and see how she's doing on that gray jug head. Oh, the gray that you traded for the habit? Yeah. You better stay away from him. Candy says he'll chew your arm off. Let's go out and see if she's all right. You figuring on taking a little night ride? No, I'm just getting acquainted. I've been working with him a little every day. Is music a part of your system of getting acquainted? I mean, you were whistling. Oh, I guess it is. Sort of a catchy little tune. Is it Irish? I. When I was a child, we'd sit by our fire in the evenings, and my father used to sing all the old songs. And the rolling hills of Ireland would spring up before my eyes. That's uh, downright poetic. You should have heard my father. He was a teacher and a proper poet. Yeah. You know, it's, it's funny. I, I've always had a real tough time with words. It's, as a matter of fact, I'm having a heck of a time right now. There's something I need to tell Pause. you. It's, well, what I'd like to say is... Pause. Hoss, don't be confused by a pretty spring day. Oh, I, I ain't confused. I, I hope you're not. Even in a dress, I don't fit in your world. Aaron, let me tell you something. You ain't exactly the best judge in the world of how a man feels, and particularly this one. I think you're as pretty as a picture in that dress. And you will fit in my world just fine. 
I don't know, Hoss. I just don't know. Maybe, maybe I'm like Nightwind. I've always run free. I mean, he, he's never even been in a stall before, nor on a picket line. Aaron. I mean, not even at night. All I'd ever have to do was wake him up and turn, and he'd be there. Aaron. Even when it was so dark, I could hardly see him. I think that's why I called him Nightwind. Aaron, please. There's something I gotta tell you, and, and you gotta listen to me. I want to protect you. I want to look after you. And I want to make sure that nothing ever happens to you again, like happened up in the Dakotas. I want to. I want to be near you and with you. Boss, are you sure? Yeah, I'm sure. Boss. Looking for your paw, but as long as you're here, I'll talk to you. And no apology for interrupting. What do you want, Mr. Murray? I just saw a stinking Paiute skulking around the Roundup camp, Hoss. I'm not going to put up with that kind of talk, Mr. Murray. I invited that Indian here. We're going to trade him some beef for some horses. You're a fool, Hoss. My best advice, I think, to you is to go on home. Man. Maybe, uh, maybe this will interest you. Wired a friend of mine in the cavalry up the Dakotas about this O'Donnell woman. My well, man, she's she's an insurrectionist. She's a traitor. She she's worse than a squaw. Aaron. is going to be my wife, Murray. And you best keep that in mind from now on out. Take me a couple of days to cut my stock out of the herd. Just make sure that he keeps his pet Indians away from camp until then. Go on, get out of here. Son is going to marry, but you. You should find an interesting way to tell me. Yeah, we got dead at that. Hey, uh, you still got some of that good French champagne? I, I think a celebration's in order, huh? Yeah, sure. Sure is. Don't worry about Murray. He's just an unpleasant man. Unpleasant? That's a mild word for it. What makes him hate me? Irrational. It's, it's become a disease with him. Are you afraid of him, Aaron? Yes. I guess I am. Well, you don't have to be from now on out. The world is full of Murrays. All my life, each time I've met him, each place, I've been scared of all of them. Well, that was before. Yeah. Come on, let's get this champagne. If you don't mind, I'll be along in just a minute. Anything you say.
they did not know. One more reason why you should leave them. And you are not like they are. My father was once. I can learn. To live within walls, behind locked doors, where you cannot feel and smell the change of the wind, you would wither and choke on bitterness. I am not an Indian. You are more Indian than you are white. The men who were just here, they know that. And they hate you for it. He wants to kill you for helping the Paiute. He would have to kill my husband first. You have no husband. You must have heard what Hoss Cartwright said to his father. I heard. But I did not hear you. And hear me now. He is to be my husband. Do not forget the prophecy. you talk to him, you got to know what to say. Hey, how's the shoulder? You ready to go for that ride? <laughs> right. Yes, right. After two weeks indoors, I'm raring to go. Well, good, let's go. Move. Well, we'll deliver the cattle tomorrow. There's a big box canyon back up north of here. I'll put them in there so they won't get mixed up with your horses. Be your, your woman? Yeah. My wife. It is hard to think she will leave my people. Well, she won't ever be any farther away than she has been the last couple of weeks. Very far away. A strange land to her. She does not belong there. She can belong there. No. Your people hate her. We believe. She has been touched by the spirits. She told me all about the prophecy, but maybe if she's married to a white man, it won't come true. It will find her. Until then, I wonder if she would be happier with those who dishonor her or with those who love her. I love her, Baron. Amen. 
had time to get the cattle together out of that herd. Go ahead. We got big trouble. It's money. It's Murray. He told his crew he was going to take uh, some picked men and go pay the Paiutes a visit. He knows where that camp is, boy. I better get out there. Uh, Candy, you and I will ride out to Murray's place. If he's not there, we'll meet you at the camp. All right. I'll get my things. I'll get your horse. Karen, maybe you better stay here. The Paiute wouldn't be there, Hoss, for me. Count four. Four men, four rifles, and bullets to waste. Until you came, we were three. Only two rifles. Now we are five, and we have four rifles. We'll have two more pretty soon, Paul and Candy. If they are not here soon, they may find only bodies. Yeah, I know what you mean. If they got one man up on that high country up there, they'd have us right in their sights, wouldn't they? They will get one there. On the other hand, if one of us got up there, we'd have them in the same position, wouldn't we? I'm going to try for that range. Hoss! Hoss! Hoss, they'll kill you. That's what they're trying to do now. You stay here. care for him, Baron. I could have written for help. He would not let you do that. I think he fears the prophecy. I think you also fear it. That's why you left the Sioux and the Paiute, because no, of it. No, I do not fear it. The prophecy was an old man's muttering. It has no more meaning than the wind. Dr. Ney. I'm going to divert their fire. the Koya. Squaw gonna tell me what to do.
He wants my weapons to be buried with me. Well, he, he's going to have to wait a long time, because you're going to be all right. You hear? Don't waste precious time. Oh. Oh. I'm going to take you back home. You hear? I can't, I can't go back there without you. I, I can't go back alone. She's gonna run off and leave me. Now I wish to God she had. Nobody gets hurt. All right, throw down that mailbag. Hurry it up. I got it. Come on, let's get out of here. Nobody move. Did everything go according to schedule? Everything went just like you said it would. Well, except my horse went lame on me out there. Ah, uh, well, by tomorrow you'll be able to buy a whole new string of mounts. Set it down gently. Uh, if you don't mind, I plan this. Gentlemen, gentlemen. Please don't act like a pack of vultures. I don't see any brown envelope. You will, you will. Addressed to the First Union Bank in Sacramento, bulging with 12 new $1,000 gold certificates. Yeah, if that telegraph operator over in Fallon wasn't lying to us. He had a completely honest face, otherwise I would never have bribed him for the information. <laughs> Here it is. It's not addressed to the bank, but perhaps they're getting tricky. My dear Lucy, much as I'd like to marry you, I... There's nothing here. That telegraph operator took us for 150 bucks. Well, that should be a lesson to me. Never trust an honest man. They're capable of any perfidy. Oh, there he goes with those two-bit words. How come you even let him join up with us? How come nothing ever works? Chance, gentlemen. Chance. Sometimes the cards are cold and nothing ever works. Other times you come up with a deck full of aces.
Jarvis. How do? Why, if it ain't Mr. Cartwright, all the way from Virginia City. Hey, I got a notion that you didn't stop by just to say hello. Now, what can I do for you? Uh, well, I, uh, I, I need a horse. Uh, this one went lame. Well, you came to the right place. This chestnut here is as good or better than anything you've got on the Ponderosa. That's why I came to see you. Ben Cartwright. He may own the biggest ranch in the state, but he <laughs> still has to come to old Milt Jarvis. <laughs> well, I wouldn't think of going anyplace else. <laughs> well, Mr. Cartwright, that's a fine horse. A horse a man can be proud of. Yeah. Them friends of yours? Acquaintances. Well, I ain't one to give advice, leastwise not to a man like you. But I've got to say, them two look mighty sneaky to me. Uh, well, I'll, uh, I'll, uh, I'll keep that in mind. Now, about the price of this horse. Well, look, you know I don't take advantage of people. Not even Ben Cartwright. Well, when you get the bill at the end of the month, you'll be surprised. Now, I'll change the saddle for you. We just got ourselves a horse. Well, what on earth did you use for money? The gentleman is very happy to send the bill at the end of the month. How come? Well, he... He thinks I'm, I'm a rancher from Virginia City. Ben Cartwright. You must be a dead ringer for him. So it would appear. Austin Joe should be along in a couple of minutes. Well, why wait, huh? This timber, 18 sections, half a township. It's just what we need. We'll take it all. And the railroad will supply the logging crews. Dan, what do you think? What are you asking him, a college boy, for? Ben, the railroad authorized me to go $180,000 for the tract, but I'll take it upon myself to go two hundred. dollars Shake hands, and you've got $30,000 in cash to bind the deal. And I still want to hear what Dan has to say. His professors say he's the top forestry student at the university. Dan, what do you think? 200,000 is a lot of money, Mr. Cartwright. But you can't sell that tract. You'd be buying a whole watershed. Log the land clean and you'll have soil erosion, flood, drought. Why do you want to listen to him? You must realize how important the railroads are to this country. Yes, and I also realize what flood and drought could do to this country. You heard what Dan had to say. Has to be my answer. This isn't my final word, Ben. I'm staying in Virginia City until you change your mind. Nobody, nobody says no to the Central Pacific. Come on. Sorry we're late, Bob. Right between you and Wentworth. Well, you know what we've been talking about. Dan agrees with us. He, he advised against it, so... I turned him down. Uh, I think you're right. First off, after that winter snow, a lot of ranches around here could be in trouble. Yeah. Gentlemen, we are not going to sell the Central Pacific. They threw you out, huh? Quite the contrary. Of course, he was a little surprised to see Mr. Cartwright in, uh, in this attire. But by the time I'd finished with my usual piles of persuasion, he gave us the best suite in the hotel. Charged to my account. You see, the best is uh, very nice, but the coat's a little dull, don't you think? I mean, this coat has has some has great style. Well, it's a little more fancy than what you usually wear, Ben. Now, this is Ben Cartwright. And after all, it is what you ordered. It's a perfect fit, too. Ah, your San Francisco tailors did a marvelous job. Yes, yes, they, they, they did do a marvelous job, didn't they? Excellent, excellent, very handsome. Uh, 
But I, I, I would like to take that one along as well. A little change, a little variety in a man's life, you know? <laughs> I couldn't agree more. All those work clothes you ordered came in. Oh, yes, fine. Uh, you frayed that collar rather badly, Ben. Yes, I... I think you'll need some shirts and some ties. Yes, shirts and ties. Oh, and a vest. Uh, yes, yes, of course, you a vest. tell Haas I finally got some vests in that'll fit him. Oh, yes, yes, I'll, I'll tell Haas. Joseph is easy to fit, but Haas, now, that uh, requires special tailoring every time. <laughs> well, they're a pair of fine boys, though. Yes, they, yes, are. they are. Shirt, fine boys. string oh. tie. Oh, very good, very, very. Uh, I think I'll just put all these on now. Oh, I'm staying at the hotel for a couple of days. Why don't you send the other things over there? My pleasure. <laughs> oh, uh, what would you like for me to do with this? Oh, I'm afraid that coat has seen its good days. Why don't you find some deserving so I might be able to use it? Oh, um, Oh, right in there. Thank you. My taste is impeccable. But if you two want to get into that hotel, you'd better get yourselves cleaned up. Any minute, somebody's going to get smart. And we're all in trouble without a dime's profit. My friend, appearance is all. I had to take care of that first. Just make sure that you don't get caught with a bunch of them cards up your sleeve, like you did in Carson City, huh? No one is going to question Ben Cartwright's integrity, we hope. But you'd better have the horses standing by, just in case. Uh, ben Cartwright behaving like a cussed, ornery, stubborn mule. Remain in Virginia City till I can buy her timber come hell or high water. Morning, Mayor. Morning, Sam. Uh, Mr. Wentworth, do you know our mayor? Mr. Wentworth is with the Central Pacific Railroad. Oh, a railroad man, eh? Always a pleasure, sir. Uh, anything I can do to make your stay in our city more enjoyable, you just say so. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. Now, that'll be just uh, two dollars and... Mr. Cartwright. Whiskey, please. Sure. And a drink for these gentlemen. Yes, sir. Did you join me in a drink, my dear? Miss Wells. Dixie Wells. Miss Wells? It'll be the day when I say no to a drink. Thank you. Now, bartender. Make it a double, no chaser. Here's to you, Mr. Cartwright. And to you, Miss Wells. This is a rather big occasion. It's the first time I've seen you in the Lucky Nugget. Well, I had never been aware of its attractions. Well, I worked in the Silver Dollar for a couple of weeks. You didn't notice me then. My dear, that's a mistake I will never make again. You know, you're nothing like I figured. I mean, I thought you'd be kind of stuck up and hard to talk to. Kind of like a Sunday school teacher, only rich. Uh, my dear, I can tell you that Ben Cartwright is not at all like that. You know, if I hadn't seen you on the street before, I would just swear I was talking to another man. I can assure you, my dear, I am what I always was, warm and human. Would you like to go over and sit at the table in the corner, talk and kind of get to know each other better? Well, that would be... The but uh, not right now, in in a little while. Uh, bartender? Yes, sir. Uh, what do I owe you? No hurry, Mr. Cartwright. When you leave, or I'll send you a bill. Well, thank you very much. Uh, is uh, this seat open, gentlemen? Sure, Mr. Cartwright. Sit down. How much is a, a stack? A hundred. But you don't need cash. We'll settle after the game's over. After all, if uh, Ben Cartwright isn't good for a stack or two, who is? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, thank you very much. I, I hope I don't spoil your game. I haven't played for quite some time. Uh, don't worry, Mr. Cartwright. We'll help you. Thank you. 
very kind. <clears throat> I guess these bits. Two pairs of fives and sixes. Three threes. Yeah, well, your luck's changing, isn't it, Mr. Cartwright? Well, we're grateful for small mercies. Don't get discouraged, Mr. Cartwright. Your luck's bound to change. Well, I'm afraid I'll need more chips before that can happen. How about four more stacks? All right. That's a total of eight. Yes, that's right. You're a hundred and a hundred more. Well, I, uh, I'm not sure about this hand. Well, I, I, I do have just enough chips, I believe. Yeah, I'll see. Three ladies. Three kings. Well, I, uh, I believe this is, uh, this is better. A royal flush, it sure is. You see, as you said, at the end, I did get lucky. I've been watching you. I got a notion that you've been dealing from the bottom of the deck. No one has ever questioned my integrity. Then it'll be a brand new experience. Now shove those cards over here. Anderson, drop that gun. Put it away. Come on. Ben, what's the matter with you? Getting into a poker game with this pack of thieves. Well, uh, I... Why, half the men at the Ponderosa have lost a lot of money to these card sharpers. Well, exactly. That's that's why I was sitting in with them, to see if I could catch them at it. But, Ben, after all these years, you ought to know that you don't just take matters in your own hands. You come to Roy Coffey. Uh, well, of course, I, I do know that, Roy. There's no mystery about these men. They're, they're just professional gamblers. I'll give you an instance. I'll bet he's got something right here that might be a little help. How about that? A couple aces? Not too bad in a poker game, huh? Listen, boys, if you're smart, you'll take the first stage out of here in the morning. And you won't try to cash those chips. How much did they get you for, Ben? Well, it, it wasn't exactly... He was playing for Marcus. Nobody took him for anything. Well, that's good for all of you. Yeah. Ben, we've got something a lot more important than a poker game to take care of. Come oh, on. really? Well, I, I, uh, I, I think I'd better get back to the uh, Ponderosa. Ben, this can't wait, believe me. Well... Well, don't you think I ought to know what this is all about? I, I might need my lawyer. Ben, a lawyer won't do you any good. Some fast departure he's gonna make. He's not gonna make one unless he's got a hacksaw to cut them bars. I wouldn't leave town, Ben. Now, Ben, I'm not going to lecture you on your duties as a citizen, but you just got to sell that timber track to the Central Pacific. I mean, sooner or later, Virginia City's going to need the railroad. Oh, well, of course it will need a railroad. It seems to me that uh, 200000 plus $30,000 in cash is a pretty fair deal. 200000 plus um, 30000 in cash. Certainly, just like I told you before. I got it right here. Well, I... Uh, I just don't see how I could say no. 
<laughs> I told you. I told you you wouldn't find a more public spirited citizen anywhere. <laughs> well, I, I try to be. <laughs> well, you just sign this bill of sale, Ben, and the thirty thousand is yours. The brand new pen, Ben, and I'll uh, notarize the signature just the same as I always do. Like you always do, of course. Uh, on second thought, I think I should have a little time to study this, uh, this bill of sale. I know what you're gonna do. You're gonna go back to that college student again who'll give you a lot of talk about floods and soil erosion. Oh, no, no, of course not. Uh, I, I, I'm not gonna talk to any college student at all. <laughs> I, uh, I just want to have a chance to study it, and then you'll have a Cartwright signature. Old Abe Lincoln himself couldn't have done any better. I don't know. It might be a trifle too good. A bit rusty. I haven't had much call for forgery lately. But... I can assure you, Mr. Ben Cartwright's signature will be a gem. Yeah, we'll be if we can get our hands on it. We'll get our hands on it. And we'll come up with our deck full of aces. Wentworth, I told you I wanted to look over the bill of sale. I will not be rushed. Well, now, don't get excited. I wanted to let you know that my room is just across the hall. I'll be ready whenever you are. Well, the fewer interruptions I have, the sooner I'll be ready. surprise. I'm sorry I haven't time for visitors right now. Well, you better find the time if you want to stay in business. Well, my dear, no one speaks to Ben Cartwright that way. No one is speaking to Ben Cartwright now. Oh, you're very smart, Mr. Whoever you are. Ben Cartwright wouldn't know how to handle a deck of cards like you did. And he would not have friends like this. I'll take care of that. Violence is no solution. Now, take your hand off her. You're using your head, mister. I have a hunch your being uh, the spitting image of Ben Cartwright is going to pay very, very well. Why do you say that? Come on. You were doing real good at the Lucky Nugget till Roy Coffey showed up. Don't tell me you're going to stop there. Well, you let me handle her. We can get her out of here quietly. No, we're not home. taking any chances. My dear, there is a small deal involved. And if you insist, we'll cut you in for a quarter of the amount. One thousand dollars. If I know you, it's ten times that. It is not. It's only thirty thousand. Thank you for setting us straight. You can put me down for a full 7,500, Mr. What is your name? Meredith. Bradley Meredith. Well, 7,500 is the price for keeping my mouth shut. I'm going to get out of this rotten town and the lucky nugget once and for all. You're not going to agree with her, are you? Please, I will negotiate with her. And I'm sure that when she realizes how much time and effort was spent in preparation, she'll agree to a lesser amount. I do like the way you say things. But the price is still the same. You know, financial discussions between a man and a woman are 
rather sordid, don't you think? I would be willing to consider a top price of uh, 3000 providing you earn it. How? Well, it would be helpful if we had some details about the uh, ponderosa, the layout of the place, and oh, several other things. Well, I've, I've never exactly been invited there socially, but uh, a lot of the ranch hands do come in the Lucky Nugget. Ah. Miss Wells, what is your first name again? Dixie. Dixie, of course. I should have remembered. I'm sorry. Dixie, let us sit down and see what you can remember from these fond associations. You know, Brad, you've got real class. Whenever you're ready. I'm ready right now. Don't worry about Wentworth. He just makes a lot of noise, that's all. There are other timber tracks you could buy. One just 30 miles south of here. Two across the uh, California border. Did you tell him that? He wouldn't listen to me. I did make a list if you'd like to give it to him. Oh, sure, I'd be glad to. Hop sing neat grocery. Black pepper, coffee, mustard, tea, flour, what, coffee. What, what, whatever's on the list. Right. Please, don't forget the Chinese tea. Don't forget the China tea. Thank you. When Joe gets back, tell him goodbye for me. Will do. Timber track. Mr. Conlight! Mr. Conlight! You forget this! But... looking for this. Uh, the, uh, where are... Um, where did you put my, my ledger? Hopsing not put anywhere. Oh, I'm terribly sorry, Hopsing. I, uh, I, I'm... Uh, what I really meant was... Did you see where I put it? Ledger where it always is. On your desk. <sighs> Hopsing never touched the book. You might have seen them. You worked late last night. You take the paper upstairs. Of course, I should have remembered. Can't find paper? <laughs> How he run big ranch. Hey. You, if you want a piece of paper, you say no. Now you say yes. I have no idea what you're talking about. Where's that piece of paper, though? It's important. In trash barrel. In trash barrel? I'll find it. Not that one. This other one. Never mind. I'll get it. I'll get it. Make up your mind. Save trouble. Up 
Up sing. Where's the key to the desk of my room? Key? I thought you you want list. Oh, forget the list. Where's the key? Hop sing, no have key. You have a key in in, in pocket. Never mind. I'll get it open. I found it. It's all right, Hopsing. I found it. I'm sorry if I was a little sharp with you, but there'll be a nice raise for you at the end of the month. Hopsing, go bed now. My heart needs long rest. Nhâm cháu lo. Cái xong. Now here it is. Now when Ridley told us at the hotel we'd find you here. Well, that's good because I've been looking all over town for you. I was <laughs> beginning to get a little worried. <laughs> well, we had to take Fielding down to the stage. Uh, well, well, you haven't changed your mind. Of course, I haven't changed my mind. Good. Then we got a deal. No, we don't have a deal. But uh, Young Fielding made out a list of properties you might like to buy. List? What sort of nonsense is this? Well, a list of timber tracks that you can cut without ruining the watersheds. You gave me your word that you'd sell me that timber. I got the cash right here. I want that bill of sale. Now, look, when, when I told you that I would not sell. Are you going to deny that in front of witnesses you agreed to sell? What witnesses? Roy Coffey and Mayor Blaine. We haven't seen either of them for a week. Don't tell me that. I was there. Maybe you've had a little bit too much to drink. Now you promise to sell me that timber. And you will, or I promise you, you'll spend the rest of your life in court. And I tell you, Mr. Wentworth, I made no such promise. Three of us heard you say it. Mr. Wentworth, are you sure you feel all right? I feel fine. But apparently you two have gone crazy. I'll see you in court. You know, if I was Central Pacific and I hired that feller, I think I'd have to hire me another one, a keeper. <laughs> no, he's not crazy. I don't know what he's up to. I think I'd better stay in town. Hello there, Mr. Cartwright. Hello. Uh, I'd like to have a room just for the night. Uh, Mr. Cartwright, you've already registered. Here's your key. Trouble getting Ben Cartwright's signature. 
No one was there to spoil things? Uh, no. I don't think so. Well, it won't take too long to get the 30000 from that railroad man, now, will it? I mean, uh, all you have to do is copy the signature. Oh, oh, God, you, you do a great job with Lincoln. Just great. Well, there, there, uh, there, there may be a delay. Why? I mean, you said he was just itching to hand over the money. Well, uh... Oh, I know what it is, Brad. You're angry with me because cause I was hard and tough. Because I drove a hard bargain. Oh. No, you've been very helpful. I don't care what share you give me, honest. All I want to do is get out of here and be with you. Everybody thinks Ben Cartwright is so great. He's nothing but a stuffed shirt. You have got real class. Thank you. Ben Cartwright looks a lot like you, but I could tell the difference right off. He's just a rancher. You are a gent. Oh. Please, you will take me with you, won't you? Uh, yeah, uh, after the deal is, uh, is, is, uh, is uh, finished, uh, we'll, we'll talk about it. Oh, I'm going over to the Lucky Nugget right now and quit. They're going to have to find another girl to take Dixie's place. Uh, wait. You mustn't be hasty, Dixie. Oh, I'll take my chances. Good luck, Brad. I wouldn't want Ben Cartwright to show up and ruin everything. Well, I'm, I'm not worried about Ben Cartwright. <laughs> Do you know if Mr. Wentworth is in his room? I believe he's in the dining room. Oh, thank you. Mr. Wentworth, I'm going to make you a very happy man. Ben Cartwright, you... You spoiled my whole day. You're not spoiling my supper. I've wired the railroad. Everything's in the hands of the lawyers. The, the, what for? You wanted a signed bill of sale. Here it is. In the 30 years I've worked for the railroad, I've dealt with convicts, hoodlums, even lunatics. No one's ever behaved in this way. What kind of satisfaction are you getting out of all this? I don't understand. But as a man of honor, I, I kept my word. When I get the cash, you get this. I'll get it for you first thing in the morning. In the morning? Oh, yes, it's, it's in the Wells Fargo safe. Roy Coffey didn't think it would be smart for me to carry all that cash. Too many thieves around. Well, Mr. Wentworth, if you want to call the deal off, just say so. No, Ben, 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 now you can trust the railroad. Perhaps, perhaps not. The purchasing agent doesn't seem to be a very stable man. Oh, no, Ben, Ben, listen to me. It, you, you sit right down here, right here. <laughs> I don't know how, but I'll track down that Wells Fargo manager and I'll get him to open the safe. Well, that sounds a little more businesslike. Well, no, don't blame me. You know, none of this would have happened if you hadn't gone through all those shenanigans. I'll, I'll be in my room. May I have my room key, please? Are you sure you didn't take it, Mr. Carwright? Oh, absolutely. We have a duplicate. Well, the most efficient hotel. Thank you. Oh, 
old, Mr. Cartwright. It's a shame, you know. All that hard work for nothing. If you'd only stayed out of Virginia City an hour or two longer, it would have been all so simple. Well, I'm sorry if I got in your way. I couldn't interest you in a little game of poker, could I? No. Dice? No, I'm afraid I wouldn't do any better at dice. I assure you the stakes would be exceedingly low. If I win, I walk out that door without bothering anyone. I'm sure the sheriff has enough on his mind without... without me. Matter that isn't just the sheriff. I want Wentworth to come back and see both Ben Cartwrights. I'm afraid he thinks I'm crazy for changing my mind all the time. <laughs> I'm afraid I did confuse him a bit. <laughs> but in a good cause. Wentworth found the Wells Fargo manager. He's over at the office now. You better get over there, and I wouldn't waste any time either. I think I'll wait till Wentworth gets back here with the cash. Come on, Meredith, let's get going. We ain't gonna be treated like flunkies no more. And put that gun down. You ain't got the faintest idea of what to do that day. I'm afraid he does. Gentlemen, Mr. Ben Cartwright. Now throw your guns down. Come on, move. Oh, I, I forgot to mention it. Um, my two associates, Mr. Nicholson, Mr. Murphy. Delighted. Now, what do you say we all pay the sheriff a visit? If you insist. Edith, you first. Is, is Mr. Cartwright still in his room? I think so, sir. All right, Ben. I, I, got, I got the money, see, like, like you wanted. <laughs> I hope you're happy. I'm afraid not. Oe, I think you'd better put that money back with Wells Fargo, where it's safe. see what we got here. The defendant, Bradley Meredith, with two Confederates, Turk Murphy and Jay Nicholson, did willfully conspire to defraud the Central Pacific Railroad out of $30,000. Now, the three defendants also charged some $500 worth of wearing apparel to the account of Ben Cartwright. Plus one chestnut mare from Milt Jarvis livery stable in Eureka. Now, does that about do it? Well, that's all I know about. Well, if you just sign the statement, we'll take care of the rest. Ben, if you hadn't been so smart, I'd have caught up with Meredith myself. Look what come in this morning. Wonderful fraud, swindling, bunker games. <laughs> Mr. Meredith sure been a busy man. I know you don't need the money, but that $500 reward could just pay you for your trouble. I didn't expect that. Uh, Sheriff, Sheriff Coffey. Yeah? May I speak with Mr. Cartwright, please? He sure sounds like you, don't he? <laughs> yeah. Well, you want to talk to me? I had enough trouble. Uh, why not? I'd like to know how I was able to convince everybody that he was me. Ben, you'll have to leave your gun out here. I can't break a rule even for you. After you, Ben. I hate to impose on you, Mr. Cartwright. You've been so kind, but there's something I would like to say to you uh, privately, if I may, Sheriff. Don't make it too long. Thank you, Sheriff. And thank you for coming in, sir. As owner of the Ponderosa, for a few hours, 
I've learned a great deal. Really? Yes, it's a lesson I should have learned a long time ago. Oh, please sit down. My whole life has been based on a foolish dream. A mythical pot of gold at the end of a non-existent rainbow. Well, all that is in the past. I realize now that a great ranch like the Ponderosa can only be built with sweat and hard work. Hmm. Yes, that's true. Well, that's what it's going to be for me from now on. No more lies, no more deception. And I can assure you, I'll be a changed man when I get out. And I want to thank you for helping me come to that realization. That's all I wanted to say to you. Well, it's very commendable. Good luck, Mr. Meredith. in, throw out the keys, and then knock myself out? Ben, take these keys and let yourself out of there. Roy, can't you tell the difference between him and me? For goodness sakes, how long have you known me? I know the difference. Roy, you're like that card man. Get away. Now you get back in that cellar. I'll pull this trigger, so help me. Roy, you're making a terrible mistake. You're not dealing with a small town sheriff, brother. And don't call me Roy. Roy, what's the matter with your eyesight? Can't you see what's happening there? Sheriff, that's the wrong way. Roy, for goodness sake, Roy, what's the matter with your eyesight? You feel all right, Ben? Oh, it's fine. I just... There's some people you just can't help them no matter what you do for them. That's right. Well, Roy, I'd best be getting back to the ranch. Ben, you're forgetting your gun. I tell you, he really packs a wallop. I forget it. Oh, and my hat, too. <laughs> you may just as well take along the $500. I know you don't need it, but you might find a use for it. Yes, well, I'll, uh, I'm sure that I'll, uh, I'll be able to find some worthwhile soul who'll be able to make very good use of it. Roy, thank you very much. Thank you, Ben. I'm sorry. As long as you're the sheriff here in Virginia City, they need have no fear about law and order and justice. Thank you, Ben.